All right, so in a previous video, we were taking a look at automation and we talked about the absolute basics. So this is things like, for example, what the different modes do, some examples of when they might be useful. In this video, I'm, I just wanna go one step further. So as a recap, we know that if we hover over here, we have auto off, read, touch, latch, and write. We also have the ability to add and remove different parameters. This is something that really comes into play when you have, for example, a plugin. So for example, if I was to add Pro EQ, and now we come into this automation preference and we add and remove different plugins. Notice now we have inserts and from within Pro EQ, we have all these different areas. So for example, I have a low cut frequency, I have low cut active. I could select these and I could add this. So this has now been added to the available parameters that I have to automate. So if we right click and we expand envelopes, now you'll see we have our volume, we have our pan envelope, but we also have this Pro EQ low cut frequency that we added. So this is, in my opinion, is the hard way to do things because there's a much easier way that I like to use whenever I'm working with anything, any, any plugins that I want. So if we double click over here, let's say that, for example, I wanted to automate, let's put a high cut and I'm going to just enable the high cut and let's change the slope over here. We'll change it to something like 24 and we'll bring it all the way to the top. Let's say that I wanted to automate this high cut, which is just going to sound like a filter. A real easy way is that the minute you touch a parameter, any parameter, take a look at the top left over here. I'm going to touch all these different parameters. You just have to touch it. Just have to actually click it. You don't even have to really change it. But the minute you click something, it's going to change and it's going to be visible. Now, the minute this is visible, I should also say that if it isn't, you want to make sure that you have selected, where is it here? Uh, sometimes I once set this by accident to mouse over. What that means is the only time that you see it is if you're hovering your mouse, you will see it. But then when you try to move up to it, it disappears. So I would always try to make sure that it's on recently touched. So if you touch any parameter, you'll notice that we have this hand icon. Now, if you're working on the synth track, all we have to do is just drag this and drop this. And now we have this automation parameter that's on this track, right? I could drag, I could click this one and I could drag and drop this to the exact same track. So this is what would be called kind of like a nested automation view. And the idea here is that you have one track, which is your synth track, and any automation envelopes that that's, that are, are being used on this track, you want to have them all in one single track. That's the way that I prefer to work. It's, it's the least confusing method for me. Um, it doesn't make my brain hurt or anything like that, but there are cases where perhaps you don't want to have it um, nested on the track. Maybe you want it actually sitting in the arrange window as its own separate view. So let's click this one over here. And again, we have our high mid frequency. Now I could place this, I can create an actual automation track, which is for the high mid frequency over here. And I could let go. And now this track 11, I'd have to rename it, but this will now control the automation for this parameter that we've touched. So I don't work in either of these ways. I don't work by creating an automation track and letting it sit there. And I also don't work by, um, how, how would I say it? I don't work by opening up a plugin like we did over here, double clicking, clicking something, and then dragging this hand onto the actual track because there's a much easier shortcut, something that you can do. Again, we're going to click, so we have low cut frequency, and if you use Alter Option A, which is a stock Studio One key command, any parameter that I click, just like this, anything at all that I click, it is going to be added to this track, and that is going to be in the nested view. So now you see all those parameters that I added by just clicking and clicking the parameter and choosing Option or Alt A. They have all been added. Now the minute I automate something, notice there that the plugin went into read mode, right? So now we can make adjustments and all of these parameters, you can automate these to your heart's content. Now you could mouse click them in, which is sometimes a really easy way to be able to automate different plugin parameters. But in addition to that, if you know exactly what you want to do and you've rehearsed it, so to speak, then you could quite simply just open up this plugin and you could change this to touch mode. And then let's choose high frequency gain. Where are we here? high frequency gain, this parameter over here. Let's just automate this. Notice that this high frequency gain was being automated because we're in touch mode. 
And if I was to back it up over here and say, this is the starting point that I like, but I just want to make a momentary change. So understanding the different modes is pretty key. And you can also see why I said that touch mode is the best mode to use here. Um, because it really gives you that flexibility of leaving everything where it was in your static level, but you're just momentarily coming in there to do some automation. Now I'm going to go back into read mode over here. So we have talked about automating basic levels. We've talked about three different ways to get automation points. For example, if we have a plugin that's open, we can click a parameter like this and we can drag and drop it on the actual track. We can drag and drop it to a new section, which will create an automation track that isn't linked to the actual track itself. And then the way that I prefer to do things is by basically any parameter that you click you make active, anything like that, uh, just alter option A and it will quite simply get added to this list. Now, if you're not viewing this in the envelopes view, which is going to let you see everything unfolded, then there's another way that we can take a look at things. We know that we can choose the global automation, which is going to show automation for any and all tracks that have it, or we can do the right click and we can show hide automation. This is track based and it only applies to the track that you're working with. Now the same envelopes that we saw by clicking zero and seeing everything laid out, those same envelopes, they're available over here, as long as we have our automation showing by clicking this drop down list. This might be a little bit more neat and easier for people to visualize. We have some different color breaks and also we have a real like key indication of what it is that we're automating. So it tells us low frequency gain, it tells us the track name, insert one, pro EQ, low frequency. It really depends on how you want to see things, how your brain works, how you want to stay organized. Now, the last thing I'm going to say, and then I think it's more than enough to kind of hit the ground running with automation, is that we have basically a couple different types of way that we can automate in Studio One. This is what I would call like track-based automation. So we have a track, we have our timeline, we can draw actual automation nodes and that automation is going to follow. But let's say that we wanted to do something else. I'm going to open up my browser for a moment and let's go into our instruments and let's choose something like, for example, we're gonna bring in an instance of Mai Tai. Now in this case, I'm gonna double click and I'm just going to create an instrument part. Now if I double click and open up this instrument part and I open up this instrument, the same way that we click, for example, I'm clicking the global volume or the velocity, keep your eye in this top left over here. These parameters over here will update and then I know that I can either drag this down or simply by clicking alter option A that I'm going to get the automation envelope for whatever parameter that I had set up over here. So this is our master gain. But there's not, honestly, there's one other way that we can do this as well. And that is, uh, let's call it, uh, I'm hesitant to use the term region-based, but let's call it instrument part-based, but it really is region-based. So if I had two different uh, events over here, if I double-click this one, and this is the one that's in focus, let's click this same parameter, and this time, instead of dragging the master gain parameter to the track, I'm going to drag it to the actual instrument editor. Now watch what happens when I let go. Master gain. Now check this out. I can now create automation points for this, and it is going to be, you also see it kind of show up if you have the preference enabled, you'll also see it show up and take a look at this automation. Notice though, that this track isn't necessarily in a touch mode or a read mode, but notice what happens here. Take a look there. So the automation that we added for master gain, that automation is basically region based. And you can add any point where this shows up, the sound, the amount, the oscillator, the cutoff frequency, anything like that. You don't always have to do track-based automation where you click this and then you have to drag this hand over to the track. What you can do is you can do the exact same thing. You can click it and drag the hand over here and then you will see that parameter show up in the actual editor. Here's now our filter cutoff and this is something that we can do as well. And I've just made that change. And now if we open up the instrument, keep an eye on our filter cutoff and our master gain. So I've automated this, but it's actually, the automation is existing on the instrument part. Now, the reason I like this for, for particular software instruments when it's supported 
is that sometimes automation can get messy and it can kind of lock you into place when you're working on something. If you use instrument part-based automation, notice that if I click this and I go over here, these parameters, um, they are automatable, but they don't have any figures set over here. So I can adjust both of these, but they're not kind of locked into that read automation mode. So it's definitely something worth checking out. It works for lots of different instruments. You just have to click the parameter and as long as you see it apply here in the top left and you can drag it into the editor and you see an actual tab that appears, then that might be something worth checking out. Two more things I'm gonna talk about and then that's it for this video. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is when you talk about automation, automating something, you really have to think about the, the busing and the structure of your song. So for example, the same person that I was talking to that inspired me to do this video, I said, can you give me an example? And he said, well, yeah, two things. First of all, if I wanted to filter something, I wanted to have like the whole section, the whole song instead, except the vocals, get very filtered for a moment, and then everything would come back. Like I hear that a lot in the songs and I, I, I'm not sure how to visualize that or how to do it. Well, if you think about your whole entire song, in fact, let's remove this track and instrument. And let's set this currently, let's set this to off. If you think about your whole entire song for a moment, and let's say that this track over here is the vocals. A real easy way to be able to filter everything else out but leave the, vo the vocals in full frequency would be quite simply if I was to just create a bus channel. So I could right click and I can add a bus for selected channels. And then in that case, it's just a matter of creating uh, an EQ and I wanna use some type of EQ and then I'm just gonna dial in whatever it is that I wanna hear. So maybe I wanna hear like a 36 dB per octave and I want it to start here. So maybe this is my starting point for this particular parameter. And then by the end of the section over here, uh, maybe by this point, I want everything to come in and then I want it to be just full range. So if you think about it that way as splitting up the different elements, I would quite simply come down to this parameter over here. I would dial in the starting frequency. I'm gonna single click this, Option or Alt A, and now I've drawn in this automation envelope, and now it's just simple, I could do this with a mouse if I wanted to. I can click a node here, click a node here, and then at this point, I want it to be fully open. And in addition to that, I would probably want to bring this, maybe I wanna bring this out of, uh, I wanna bypass it completely. So in this case, I'm gonna to toggle the bypass on and off, so that's my last one, and I could enable the bypass frequency, and it's going to be the same thing. So at this point over here, I'm gonna bypass, and I wanna make sure that I get the, the proper state. So you gotta actually open this up. So this will be bypassed. And then in this case over here, everything else will be unbypassed. So now if we listen to that automation that's happening, this is what's happening. So just a matter of visualizing the routing and kind of um, using whatever options make sense to you. If this was something where I wanted to actually uh, kind of do this manually and by ear, as opposed to just drawing it in, then it might be something where I would do this by using the mouse and clicking and holding this parameter and adjusting it as I go. Or if you wanna be really absolute with things, then it's pretty simple to just say, okay, well, I want the automation to start here and maybe also something that might make more sense is if we go back to the bypass area over here, maybe at this point, maybe this is exactly where I want this automation to kick in. So this is just kind of, hopefully this is helping you visualize some things, right? We, we basically automated two parameters. We automated a bypass and we automated a high pass filter. So in terms of like visualizing things and in terms of laying things out in your productions, a lot of the times it's a routing thing. If you wanted to filter groups of different instruments together, you would make sure that you've sent those out to a common bus so that you can automate one EQ plugin across everything. And then this bus one and this 
unprocessed vocal would, for example, go to your main mix bus or your main outs or wherever you're going to go. Now, the last thing I'm going to say, and then I'm going to leave off with this video, is if you're ever working in a situation where you have some volume automation and you find that you've kind of pinned yourself into a corner because you say, you know, I like those automation moves, but uh, I want to bring just the overall level up. This is where something like, for example, VCAs come in handy. So in this case, this track over here, I could right click and I could add a VCA for selected channels. What does a VCA do? Well, a VCA allows you to basically have tracks that are automated in read mode, but you can still adjust them and you can offset the overall level. So if I listen to this, let's say that I wanna move up the overall level. I can adjust this. This is still being automated, but I've raised a relative level of just this track. or I can bring it down. So when you understand all these tools and how they come into play, it can really make a big difference in how you approach automation, right? We have the ability to automate things on the fly. We have the ability to pencil in automation. We can edit the automation that we recorded manually by just using the basic editing tools that we have. We've got our expand envelopes view, which allows us to see any of the automation parameters that we have for selected tracks. And in some cases that can be a lot. If you would rather work in a single track view, we can show hide the automation, and then we have these drop down menus. And then we have our global automation, which basically just allows us to see anything and everything that is automated on a track. And then we have kind of like some, I like to think of it as a get out of jail free card, where if I've automated something and it's in read mode and I'm happy with the automation, if I just want to kind of bump that up or down, and if I wanted to do that in groups of tracks, I could have this uh, VCA apply to as many different tracks as I wanted to. So once you think about your routing, once you understand the basic tools and how you can use some of these additional things, it's pretty powerful. And as long as you visualize it during your creative process, it's actually really easy to do. Anyways, hopefully that wasn't too overly technical, but I wanted to definitely split it up and I wanted to go over as many different scenarios as I could. That's it for this video. I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.